right, everybody. David Donaldson here today with not Joe Martin, but JJ Gagliardi. JJ, welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurial Impact. Thanks for having me. I'm, uh, I thought we'd do something a little different today. Today, I wanted to talk about people's paralyzation of fear of utilizing technology as leverage. Okay, now for my capacity, a lot of people think it was like, well, there's Dave again talking about technology. And well, I'm not talking about a CRM tool. I'm talking about other types of tools that are in your business. And a lot of it just revolves around audio and video. We had an event a couple of weeks ago down in Richmond where we talked about storytelling, right? We talked about social media. And I don't think you could do any of those things without the proper medium or development or utilization of technology. For sure. And I think a lot of people out there are scared. I mean, here we are, we've done 50 plus episodes of a podcast, but they don't know where to start. Just like we didn't know to start when we launched and we had to figure it out. So I thought it'd be just like, let's talk about some of the things that a lot of people probably already have at their disposal that make that they can get the most impact out of without having to go really spend any money at all, unless they wanted to. And I think what happens is people will start to spend a little bit, the more comfortable we get with things. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love that. And that's something, I mean, that's a topic that I talk about all the time. Um, I, I run a video production company and constantly am asked, oh, well, what equipment do I need to create videos? And I'll tell you what you need is absolutely nothing. You need the, the what you already own, which is a cell phone that's probably in your pocket right now. Yeah. You just need to get started. So like, I want to first and foremost say, you don't need anything other than what you already own to start creating content in any way, shape or form. All of the equipment's going to do is just increase the quality of that. But I think there's two very different distinctions, right? We have what I call production quality. Sure. And then we have the quality of the content. So what are we talking about? Is it valuable to your audience? And as long as the quality of the content is valuable, what you are sharing is of value to the people that you are trying to reach then the production value is not nearly as important as people think it is. So that is, that is, I just want to get that out in the way right now. If you take nothing else away from this episode, just get started, provide value with whatever equipment you have. That is the biggest hurdle I always see. You just have to get out there and do it. I think, you know, and I think there's really an incredible benefit with not having a fully high level production. I think there's a time and place to anything, right? If we talk about social media and we recognize that each of them individually have a different audience mm-hmm. and things are received differently. Well, I think the same goes for the production that you put out there. I think if I put a polished, finished product out there, I think some of the people out there will question the authenticity of what I'm saying. Absolutely. If it's real and rough and raw and you know unedited, is there a perceived nature that, well, they're really coming from an area of contribution or realness. Yeah. And it's not just fluff. Exactly. Well, and I think it really depends on where it sits, what what that content is, right? I mean, if yeah. we take a look at a at a marketing funnel, right? That that top of funnel awareness content, yeah, you should probably put some effort into making sure that you're putting your best foot forward. The same way as, you know, why do you go spend thousand dollars to get a great headshot? You want to make sure that you're putting oh, your best impression. Where are you spending a thousand dollars to get a headshot? Hey, and I, I have a lot of photographers <laughs> that, that, that'll charge a thousand dollars easy, okay. if not right. more. Um, but you know, some people, some, not that you have to spend that money, but sometimes it's worth it. If you're in the right profession, you need that cool. But at the same time, when you get further down into that funnel where people are aware of you and you're just providing value, you're, you know, you're communicating something. It doesn't have to be perfectly polished all of the time. Right. I mean, how did you guys start the podcast? You just kind of what hopped on zoom and started recording, right? Well, we kicked the can down the curb for a couple of weeks and said, kept saying we were going to do this thing. And we finally said that, you know what, we're going to do this thing. And what did we look? We looked around. We had video cameras because we were coming out of COVID, right? So we all had, we had some sort of a Logitech or something. Even if we had cameras, we probably had them all mounted our camera when we were starting. And we had Zoom. So we said, well, wait a minute. The, that's, that's all we need, right? Don't, let's not overcomplicate this. We yeah. have a microphone, we have a camera, and we, were, we have an ability to record ourselves. Yeah. That was it. And you immediately started providing value out into the world. And yeah. then I think it's also good to note that it wasn't until what 50 something episodes in that you went all right let's take some feedback from what we've been providing and now let's try to address some of the concerns right like there were yeah. some of the audio concerns sometimes it didn't sound as good the volume levels were off and now you're like all right well we've proven that what we are doing is valuable now how do we increase the production value so we can attract a wider audience or so that our current audience can receive this information in a better way 100 percent so let's, let's just kind of keep it there, right? Let's keep it back where we started, which was the simple low-level production value. I think it all starts with the camera, 
You all have them, right? No, I'm not here to judge between Apple and Droid. You all know my feelings about that. You and your green little text messages. That love you got up. me, people. But that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. There's a lot of value in there. Uh, but I said, so I got to have a camera. Mm -hmm. I got to have a tripod, right? I got to have somewhere to station, you know, stabilize this thing. Yep. Right? Now, the lighting matters. The room that I'm in matters, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want it too dark, too bright. So you want to sit properly, right? I don't mm -hmm. want to have my back to a window. Yep. Yeah, right. 100%. I want to have some sort of lighting in front of me. Now, I could have windows in front of me, mm -hmm. or I could have lights above me, or I could get a little loom cube, right? Yeah. We're going to throw some things in here that do have some brand types so you can go look at these things. But these are inexpensive things that you could add. Mm -hmm. A ring light. Yep. Right? The great thing about a ring light is it allows you to mount the camera right in the middle of the ring light mm -hmm. with just some different hues. Um, these are packages and things. that You can probably find them on Amazon, yep. right? Yep. Absolutely. And the one other thing that I would say that if I'm because audio does matter. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, way more than video. Audio matters yes. way more than video. And it, that's why I'm kind of going there. And again, there are cheap options out there, mm -hmm. right? There is actually, uh, so a couple of weeks ago, if, if you look up Tuesdays with Dan, I did an article. So some things we're going to reference, I spelled out in the article. And we'll, we'll attach that to, to the video link uh, on the YouTube channel. But there's a, there are going to be different versions of this. And, you know, it'll be interesting because actually not all cameras now have audio jacks to them. True. You got to uh, so get a dongle. You got to get a dongle. Exactly right. But plugging in an audio lav to your camera, there, there's a platform called, it's, uh, it's iRig. It's, I think it was 29 bucks and I can, and it came with a two pack. So JJ and I, we're not using it today, but I would plug it onto my phone and we would each, now it's not going to have mixing and sound, all those things, but it's going to get both of us and it's going to hear a voice. It's not going to have all the ambient room noise and everything like this, but it's going to have a better level of sound. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, you know, you mentioned that that sound trumps above all. Why why is sound the most important thing? You know, because so sounds the most important thing because that's what people need to hear in order to receive the, the the information. Now, I will say with social media, we're seeing this interesting kind of pivot, right? Where about eighty percent of people are consuming social media without their sound on. So, like captions are really becoming very important. Okay. So. There is a potential workaround if you go, hey, the audio wasn't very good for this uh, for this clip I made for social media. Well, let's put captions on it. Now people can still understand what you're saying. Three, four years ago, that was kind of unheard of. No one really, you know, it was all about the audio, right? So everything is always changing and pivoting is the point I want to make there. But when it comes to audio, you know, people want to be able to hear what it is that you're saying. And so if there's a ton of background noise, if there's your air conditioner in the background, if there's all this wind, wind is the biggest offender. You're outside filming yeah. in a gust of wind that doesn't seem loud to your ears, but just decimates the uh, the microphone on the, on the phone. Um, you know, all of those things do matter a bit. And so, you know, what I, I tell my clients is, if you think about how sound works, right, all it is is vibrations. And so you want to get the microphone as close to your mouth as possible because it's less opportunity for those vibrations to get ruined by something else. And so, you know, something as simple as like AirPods will be an improvement. Is it going to be as good as a professional microphone? Absolutely not. But at least if you're standing across the room from an iPhone, your AirPods are way better than trying to, you know, yell across the room at, at a phone. So think of how you can get some headphones that have a microphone in it. Yeah. As a step one. And then step two can be, all right, we're, we're seeing some success here. How do we improve it? And that's where we can get like a, a microphone system like Dave was just talking about, where we can get wired clip on lavalier mics. So those are the ones that, you know, clip onto your shirt and, you know, you can get a two pack of them so you can conduct an interview or a podcast. Yeah, like and we're that doing. exactly was my point there. Yeah, exactly. Right? And then, you know, if you want to evolve, once you get past that, then you can go, all right, well, this we're doing this a lot. We're seeing that we're generating revenue from the content we're producing so we mm -hmm. can invest a little bit in it. And that's where you can get like, I just recently picked up the DJI mic, DJI mic. It's a wireless microphone system. It's like 300 bucks. It's incredible because it attaches to the bottom of your phone, but it's a little clip on lob just like, just like that. So now you can position your phone halfway across the room, get the shot to look its best, but still hear perfect audio. You're not running cables all over the place. Yep. But the... The, the key point there is you don't have to go spend all of that money to get started. And you really mm -hmm. only should when you're in a situation where you go, okay, now the production value matters. I've proven that this works because the content is valuable. Now I want to up the production value to match the quality of the content and to give my audience more of what they're asking for. 
No, I, I think that brings up a good point. You know, the, the sound, and I you know I have done this a little while. There's another one I use. So the, the iRig Lav plug-in is great. Mm -hmm. I also have one that I plug into my laptop when I'm using that. It's a Shure, S-U-R-E. Mm -hmm. And they've got a great one. And what I love about this is it's got great sound, right? And it's a little powerful. Again, I'm talking like $29 here. Mm -hmm. You can tell who's the production guy spend $300 on stuff, and I'm keeping it real as the realtor. It's fair. Right, it's under, fair. under 30 <laughs> But what I love about that is that uh, for the first time I started using Using headphones, right? And I get it. If you're doing a, if you're recording and doing video like we do as well, people go, "Oh gosh, they're wearing these headphones." Well, it really controls the sound because you can hear yourself, you can hear the other person. You're not yell, not yelling into my mic, and you could actually really what's going on. So I love that because then I got my Shure mic. I could plug my headset into that, and I can really hear what's actually going on, what I'm saying, what's being asked of me. And there's not again an over expensive value to that, but an enhanced level of production. 100%, right? And, and, you know, it's what, what I think is really interesting is there's kind of this diminishing value of returns on on equipment when you compare it to the medium that people are consuming. So let me explain what I mean by that, right? If why should I go out and spend $1,000 on a microphone if people are going to be listening to it on the speakers on their phone? Yeah. Right. Like it makes sense if I'm going to watch in a movie theater. Yeah, we should spend a thousand, probably ten thousand dollars on a microphone to make sure it sounds its best in a movie theater. One hundred. But if the content you're creating is being consumed, consumed on a cell phone or someone's laptop that doesn't have the best technology built into it anyway, then why worry about, oh, I got to buy the best 4K camera. I got to do all this crazy stuff. Right. Like just get something that's good enough. And again, as I'm going to continue to beat this dead horse. Get started. Get started. And, and you bring up a good point, but I do think there's that, I kind of talk about like dressing for the appointment, kind of like one step above. Mm -hmm. So if I understand that people are digesting this material on audio that's low, of lesser quality, my quality for production should be one step above that. So 100%. that's why we're saying, you know, if you're just doing it open to my phone, that's probably the worst case scenario from recording my sound and them hearing it. Mm -hmm. But by me just plugging in my audio to my camera, them hearing on the other side is probably going to be pretty good for them. Absolutely. And I think it also depends on the, the like longevity of the content you're creating, right? Like what's its shelf life? So if I'm creating something for Instagram Reels, it's going to stay up for, you know, it's while it's on your profile forever, it's only showing up in the newsfeed for maybe 72 hours. Yeah. So then who cares that much? But if we're creating a podcast and people can go back and listen to these podcasts at any time or creating a YouTube video where it's a searchable library and people are still looking for my video years later, then yeah, why not invest a little bit more in the equipment and, and the time to make it the best it can be because it's got a longer shelf life. So, but when you're creating your content for social media, like just, you don't have time to worry about the quality because in three days, the content's gone. You got to create another, you know, I got to create another video. So just get out there and do it, just but match, the, do it. match the, the, the medium that you're using it, I think dictates what level of quality the the production the equipment needs to be so let's, let's kind of talk about that now so we understand that okay i've got a camera and everybody has one a lot of people probably have i have a tripod or some version thereof right the, to mount it somewhere that's yep. really what we're talking about it doesn't and have to be if a full, you like, don't they're 25 dollars. again we're 25 dollars stuff Amazon. we're talking about here yeah and we're talking about okay we've got sound now we talk about okay what am i using to record it where am i sharing it right because you you touched on real so zoom is a platform mm -hmm. I love a platform called Loom, mm -hmm. L-O-O-M.com, which is free, yep. right? And that allows me to either A, do a recording of myself or myself and screencasting, right? Yep. Depending, if you're doing video updates, if you're doing market snap updates, that, that's a great way to do some of this stuff, yeah. right? Now, where, the form that you do in it, am I doing long form or doing short form, mm -hmm. right? That all comes down to where are you going to put this? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about, so YouTube is a great place to put the long form content. Yep. Right. Now, if we're talking about Facebook Reels, or if we're talking about Instagram, right, they're more of a shorter version, mm -hmm. right? That's not where you want to put your 18, 20, 30 minute podcast. Correct. However, but if I had had it posted on Loom or, or recorded on Loom and posted and uploaded to my YouTube channel, mm -hmm. How hard is it for me to go back in there and take snippets out of that so that I can put them into reels? 
Yeah, it's really not that difficult. You know, I mean, most of the apps, Facebook, YouTube, a lot of them have the ability to even do some editing right then and there in the platform itself to just go in. Oh, I want to take that 60 second clip, that 30 second clip and download it. And so you can post it somewhere else. On top of that, I mean, there is just countless software out there that will let you do basic editing, whether you're, you know, on iMovie, if you're on Apple, I don't know what's on Android because I've never had one, but I'm sure there's plenty <laughs> of apps on, on, on Android, but there's all kinds of different apps that'll let you do you know, some basic editing where you can put in a full long form clip and then take out something shorter. Another tool that we've been using recently, which is incredible and even has a free version, is called Descript, D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T. And okay. what Descript does is I upload a video and it uses AI to transcribe the video and then I can edit the video like it's a Word document. So I can go in and just select a section and you're like, oh, I just want this section of text and then we'll export that as a little bit. Or, okay, I didn't like when I said this in this particular section, so I'm just gonna highlight the sentence and hit delete and it automatically edits the video to correspond to it. So this is a tool that no matter what level of experience you have in video production, if you know your way around Microsoft Word, you can figure out your way through this software relatively easily. That's pretty awesome. So, I mean, there's there's plenty of, of tools and, and software out there that can assist in that. And, and I think, you know, maybe it makes sense real quick to take a step back and talk about the differences. Like, why should I use short form versus long form content? I was just where I was going to go next. Yeah, right? I, th I think that's incredibly important because, you know, when, when you take a look at your, your marketing strategies, right? Like, where are your leads coming from? Like, how are people getting into your world? How are they getting into your funnel? And if those answers are referrals or anything outside of your, your digital marketing, then you kind of have a clean slate and you can go, okay, well, where do I want people to come from? Right. And so we take a look at our longer form, uh, longer form content, right? We're looking at podcasts, we're looking at YouTube, maybe some live streams, but basically what we're doing right now, the purpose of this content is to provide value, right? It's to answer questions, it's to provide education. It's to be sometimes entertaining as well, but a lot of times this is content that people are actively searching for. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world behind Google, yep. and it's owned by Google. So Funny how that happens. Funny how that works, right? And so here's a great example. A couple months ago, my dishwasher stopped working. It was making some weird grindy noise and I didn't know what to do with it, but I also didn't want to spend the money to have a repair man <laughs> to come out. So I went on YouTube and typed in dishwasher, my model number, grindy noise, exactly what I typed in. Second video in showed exactly how to take it apart and I was most likely the chopper blade. Followed it step by step, I took it apart. It was the chopper blade, it completely broken. Ordered a new replacement for $17 and my dishwasher working again. So that type of content is for because people are actively searching for it. And so if you're a real estate agent, what are people actively searching for, right? If you're, maybe you're in first time home buyers, like how do I get financing? What's the minimum credit score I need? Those are things that people are actively searching for. So creating that content that lives on the second biggest search engine in the entire world yep. means that you have a chance to now show up there, especially if you're doing content that's hyper local, right? If I go and type in real estate agent, Washington, DC, I'm going to see Zillow, Redfin, Realtor.com, all of the major apps, because no matter how big of a team you grow, you can never outspend any of those no. corporations. But if I were to now go and put that on, on YouTube and say, you know, what are the, the top neighborhoods or, you know, what is the best nightlife in Riggs Park, right? Like just creating content about your neighborhood. When people start searching for that, now you're going to rank, you're going to show up in front of them. And now this is a whole additional lead source. Now, what I love about that aspect of it, it takes me back to say, so what do people always struggle with getting all the time in a timely fashion and getting posted online is testimonials. Mm -hmm. Imagine you show up to your closing, you've got your camera, you've got your phone, you've got your little live plug-in. You just closed, JJ, I just sold you a house. Now I'm gonna get you to tell, give a video testimonial. Now what's gonna carry more impactful emotion from somebody, getting you live at the closing table, the happiest day, hopefully, that you spent with me through this arduous process, right? Or me chasing you down six times for six weeks after trying to get you to write a testimonial through stars that may or may not be perceived by the general public as actually being authentic and coming from you. 
Exactly. I mean, no one's ever going to be happier than the moment that they just got the keys to their home, right? Or they just got the check for, for, for the home they just sold. You're, you'll never have a better opportunity to capitalize on collecting that yeah. type of content, which I think then perfectly carries into what is short form content for, right? Yep. That short form content is not meant to be constantly educating, like, yes, that's a great way to use it, but people are not searching for short form content. They're on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook because they're bored, right? They have nothing else to do, so they're scrolling. And so your content needs to be just kind of short little bite size. Hey, just a quick reminder, I'm still here. Here's a little nugget of value for you as you go about your day. See you later. I'm not sitting there trying to be like, hey, pick up the phone and call me. Pick up the phone and call me. You're Don't act like a billboard. You're just simply no. reminding people you still exist and providing them little bits of value. And that's a great place where you can trickle in testimonials because now it's not you saying, hey, look how great I am. It's just like, hey, I was able to help this person and check out what they had to say. Well, And that moment can kind of evolve from testimonials to the experience that they went through, with, which is part of testimonial, but how you did your process. They're now telling that story for you, right? Or maybe they tell something funny about the process or a hardship from the process on how you solved it for them. And that becomes a couple of different real life short form that get posted out onto your reels and your stories and your different things. Right? Absolutely. You know, and, and I think that, that that brings up a good point also of how do you get a good testimonial, right? Because mm -hmm. there is, uh, you know, nothing more inspiring than a testimonial that goes, yeah, so-and-so was great. I'm really happy. I got a home. And that's it, right? <laughs> like, you got to get them, when you ask them these questions about the testimonial, you want to ask them, what was it like before you worked with me? Explain to me the feelings that you had going into this process. And now tell me now, how are the feelings now? What was it like working with me? And how did you feel throughout that process? Because when people are start sharing their emotion, that's when you really start to get that understanding of, wow, they, they were in a hard place or not a great place. And because of you as the guide, they're now much happier. And, and that emotion comes through instead of just, yeah, they were great. I'll never use another real estate agent again. Because if that's all you get and you never follow up, we all know the stats that that's not actually the case, right? So exactly. it's all about the emotion and the story. And so asking leading questions that gets them to share that is a great way to get that information out of a, a testimonial. You got to engage, you got to have fun and, and be relaxed, right? If it's stiff, it'll come across as if it just you know, get everybody to tell a couple of jokes, break it down and recognize, like you said earlier, that these, some of these platforms out there that are easier to just kind of snip down and, and pull apart. Yep. Uh, you know, I think you had touched earlier about you know, Descript, which is kind of cool, but even YouTube will, they'll transcribe for you. Yeah. Right. So you can, and which is a great way to get your SEO power behind that because you could take that tra the transcription and kind of took that up. Yep. Now, as we kind of wrap up today, and, and I told you guys, we want to keep this real simple too. We just gave you some quick ways to leverage technology. What should you be looking at to utilize and where do you put it? You know, just as we kind of walk away, what are a couple other small things somebody could look at and say, hey, if I was going to throw this in my go bag, you know, what should I have with me? You know, so. You know, we, we briefly touched about lighting a little bit. So let's talk a little bit about okay. lighting. I think, um, you know, doesn't fit in your bag, but the most powerful uh, thing for lighting is the sun, right? Like <laughs> don't, don't reinvent the wheel. Go and position yourself in a way where light is shining on your face. Like that's all that's really important to make sure that the light on your face is brighter than the, whatever lights behind you, right? So I mean by that, if there's a, if there's a window behind you, you're not going to be able to put more light on your face than the sun, most likely in well, most situations. And I think if anybody kind of thinks of uh, having been locked down for COVID for a couple of years, that's exactly what we're talking about, where mm -hmm. people were starting to play for the first time with backdrops, right? Or, yep. or, or green, probably not using green screens. Mm -hmm. And then they would just look all distorted. It's because they were probably positioned in front of a window, trying to utilize a backdrop or trying yep. to use an image, right? Yep. And it just wasn't working. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So in those situations where you have a window, Face the window, turn and face the window. So light from the window is cascading on your face. That's a great right tip right off the bat there. You know, and other than that, I mean, I'm trying to think of, of other, you know, quick things to keep in your bag. You know what, maybe this isn't an item, but here's what I would do. Here's my tip that I always give for what type of content should I create? Over the next week, anytime a client asks you a question, write it down. And at the end of that week, you'll have a list of probably 10, 15, 20 different questions that you get asked. And those are your video topic ideas right there. So they go travel with a notebook to take notes. That's all you need, right? Like keep an idea because the if you have to sit down and go, okay, I need to make a video today. Let me think about what I'm going to record. You're not going to make a video today. Yep. But if you've got a list of, of ideas and you go, all right, I can, I got 10 minutes. Let me knock out a video real quick. You can easily do that. So I think 
enabling yourself to make the system and make the, the process as easy as possible by knowing going in, I already have my list of ideas. I know what I'm going to talk about. My gear is as simplified as possible. Then all yeah. you have to do is just kind of get up the courage to hit record. Well, I think that's a great thing. The more that you do it and the more you'll be inspired to do a video or take a moment and just having knowing that you're always have these things at the ready, right? Then you could create a video at any time. Yeah. And that will start to happen, I think, more organically for you. It's like, you know, I got something to say. Let me just shoot this right now. Yep. Bro, because just like that testimonial at the closing table or that that just that reaction for your consumer to closing table, catching you in the moment when you're moved the most about what you want to say will be at its most impactful for you. 100%. You know, and I, and I think to kind of wrap it up with a quote that I love, I know you love Gary V. Love uh, Gary V. I love his quote, document, don't create. Stop yep. trying to think about, oh, I got to create something. I got to be artistic. I got to be creative and just document what's going on in your life. That's where you get the testimonial. You were at a closing. You grabbed a quick video at the testimonial. You're running to grab coffee. Grab a quick little, you know, 30 second thing of, hey, about to grab coffee. This is one of my favorite coffee shops. Where do you like to grab coffee in the morning? And then tag the coffee shop on, on social media yep. as you post it. Don't overcomplicate it. Just whatever you're doing about your day, just document it a little bit and keep there's your content. it simple. Exactly. And I'm not going to drop the other S, but keep it simple. <laughs> All right, well, so JJ, thank you. Always. Uh, always I love being here. Hope you guys found it. Like I said, there will be a list on our on the YouTube channel, uh, YouTube forward slash Entrepreneurial Impact, where we'll have provided additional lists of some of the other things that we talk about. But again, all of it free, easy to use, or relatively inexpensive for you to have at the ready, in a bag, in your car, or at your desk or at home. But thanks for joining us for another episode of Entrepreneurial Impact, and have a great week. Take care, everybody. And remember, just get started. Just get started. Start creating content. There you go.